Traditional folk songs, nobody knows who wrote them. They were handed down through generations, some of them are 300 years old. People rearrange them, the words change slightly, the melodies change slightly. The great thing about them is they're copyright free. So you can put together a gig list of really cool songs and you don't have to worry about being sued for using somebody else's material. Now, there's, there's thousands of these songs and you're thinking, yeah, folk music, but I want to tell you about, you'll know some of these, these are pop songs, um, but they, they started out life as traditional folk songs. So if I go through a few of them, you realise that you can actually make some of these traditional songs sound really good. Um, we start off with Nirvana, of course, you don't get cooler than Kurt Cobain. And when, when they did Unplugged in New York, they sang um, Where Did You Sleep Last Night? Or some people call this song In The Pines. And we all know that the Animals, their first big hit, number one hit, was The House of the Rising Sun. And of course most people know that this is a traditional folk song that anybody can sing um, copyright free. The thing is, they, they, they had a great guitar riff at the beginning of the song with, the, with this sort of the finger picking or the plectrum picking, which made it sound very much like a, an up-to-date pop song. Jimi Hendrix, his first hit, if you like, when he came over to England was uh, Hey Joe, where are you going with that gun in your hand? It's a traditional song that was sung uh, many, many, many years ago, and so it's got no copyright issues. It's not just the old uh, rock and pop singers I'm talking about. I mean, Ed Sheeran, when he first started, uploaded a, a YouTube video of himself uh, looping uh, Wayfaring Stranger, which is like old American spiritual song, which again is a traditional song, nobody knows who, who wrote it. Many, many people have recorded it, but Ed Sheeran did it vocals only, putting one layer on top of another. And this was before he sort of became such a superstar. You've got the Irish traditional songs, as many of them. Perhaps the most famous is Whiskey in the Jar, traditional. Uh, recorded by, well, Thin Lizzy made it a big hit, a pop hit, and then later Metallica did it, did it a rockier version. You probably don't know, but the, the Rolling Stones recorded the last time, one hit, but really they, they, they borrowed it from a traditional folk song, and some of the words are very similar to the folk song too. Led Zeppelin, who are very good at borrowing material, used a traditional folk song for for Gallows Pole, Bob, S Bob Dylan had a hit with Don't Think Twice, It's Alright. It's based on a traditional folk song. Bob Dylan put some extra words to it, but it's very, very similar. The Beatles, when they first started out as the Silver Beatles, one of their songs, one of their live songs was Maggie May, not the Rod Stewart version, but, but it's an old traditional folk song from Liverpool. And it was one of John Lennon's favourite songs. And if you listen to the last album the Beatles made, Let It Be, you'll hear just a little bit of Maggie May. Olivia Newton-John had a huge hit with Banks of the Ohio, uh, an old American traditional folk song which got to number one all over the world. Great song. And maybe the most famous traditional folk song to become a big pop hit was Scarborough Fair. Paul Simon came to England when he was a very young guy, touring the folk clubs, getting paid nothing. Um, some of the British folk songs taught him Scarborough Fair, which, is, which was written in the 1800s. Of course, Paul Simon went back to America thinking, ah, ah, great song, and recorded it, and uh, he claimed to write it himself, which of course he didn't. He got away with that because if you listen to Simon and Garfunkel's Scarborough Fair, then uh, there's a second song that's, that's, that's being played at the same time, Canticle, which is which makes it a very special version. But if you play Scarborough Fair in the normal way, just singing, are you going to Scarborough Fair, parsley, sage, rosemary and thyme, then that is okay. It's a, it's a traditional folk song. The Beach Boys recorded Sloop John B, a traditional folk song from the Bahamas, uh, I think sung by sailors um, in the 1800s. But um, they, again, they made it into a pop song. And one of my favorite traditional folk songs. Most of you won't remember this because you're far too young. Steel Ice Span, one of the first electric folk bands 
recorded all around my hat, which was a, a, a traditional British folk song, again written, I don't know, in the early 1900s perhaps, but they did a great um, rewrite of it, a version of their own, and uh, wonderful. But it's a traditional folk song, and you can use it. So there's many, many more, but if you want to put together a gig list, if you, if you play in pubs or play a little festivals or whatever, it's very easy to put together this, this wonderful uh, traditional music, which you can research on YouTube, do a bit of Google Googling, and you can um, find a lot of hidden gems. I play in a, a little folk duo with my daughter called The Violet Moon. We play a, mostly traditional folk songs. Okay, so remember, traditional folk music can be cool.